Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for movie reveals no one saw coming. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! Consider this your spoiler warning. Number 30, when the ending takes place, remember me. Baby, it's, all, it's okay. It's okay. Hey. While we might not remember much about the critically panned Remember Me, there's no way we could forget its shocking ending. Robert Pattinson plays Tyler, a young man navigating his fractured relationship with his father and a new romance. But I didn't call you. It wasn't me. You could do worse than have a father who bails you out of jail. In the end, Tyler begins to repair things with his dad, and it seems like the movie may finish on an optimistic note. But then it turns out that the office where he's waiting for his dad happens to be in the World Trade Center, and the day happens to be September 11, 2001. The twist comes basically out of nowhere, causing some critics to even label it exploitative, essentially borrowing from a real-life tragedy to heighten the milk-toast drama of the film. Number 29. She wasn't a young girl. Orphan. The Colemans think their family is going to grow for the better when they adopt young Esther. Unfortunately, that dream quickly proves to be a terrifying nightmare. After several mysterious and murderous incidents, we learn that Esther is secretly a 33-year-old woman. She only looks like a child. According to our records, Lena Klammer was born in 1976. She's 33 years old. Due to a rare condition known as hypopituitarism, she was able to pose as a young girl. The person they thought they adopted wasn't just a grown woman. She was also a deranged serial killer. You okay? We're not sure there are enough family counseling services in the world to fix this situation. Number 28. Bryony's Fictional Ending – Atonement This tragic drama follows Bryony, a young girl whose testimony leads to the false imprisonment of her older sister Cecilia's lover Robbie. In her later years, she writes a book about what happened following Robbie's release from prison, describing a reunion with Cecilia. Because, in fact, I was too much of a coward to go and see my sister in June 1940. I never made that journey. According to Bryony's account, she's able to make up for her childhood mistakes. But in a heartbreaking twist, we learn that in real life, Robbie and Cecilia never actually reunited. They both died during the Second World War, and Bryony's writing is akin to wish fulfillment after a lifetime of regret. I wanted to give Robbie and Cecilia what they lost out on in life. I'd like to think this isn't weakness or evasion, but a final act of kindness. Number 27. Her Daughter is Alive – Kill Bill, Volume 1 when a pregnant former assassin known as The Bride is attacked by her ex-lover Bill, she's put into a coma. She wakes up several years later and learns that she ended up losing her baby, which sets her off on an ultra-violent quest for revenge. This high-octane, action-packed movie has its share of shocking moments, but the ending takes the cake. The Bride has fought her way through the Crazy 88, Gogo Yubari, and Oren Ishii. Later, Bill finds a survivor of the encounter, Sophie Fatale, and simply asks her if the bride knows that her daughter is actually still alive. That sure is one way to set up a sequel. One more thing, Sophie. Is she aware her daughter is still alive? Number 26. Non-Linear Story – Arrival you may expect the unexpected when you're watching a movie where aliens land on Earth, but Arrival takes the complicated storytelling further. Linguist Louise Banks attempts to find a way to communicate with the extraterrestrials and figure out what they want. The way the aliens communicate is far more complex than anything humans can comprehend. But that's not the only revelation. I don't understand. Who is this child? While the audience has been watching Louise discover the truth, we also see scenes we assume are memories of time with her daughter Hannah. But it turns out these clips are not flashbacks. If anything, they're flash-forwards. The glimpses into future events show that the audience's presumptions were all wrong, and that Louise must communicate in a different way to ensure peace. If you could see your whole life from start to finish, would you change things? Number 25. The Crisis Was Over – The Mist My car's parked in the center lane of the parking lot far end. Whoever gets
get there first. Open up both doors. I'm a little piling as fast as we can, okay? Let's go. We can't think of many movies more haunting than the last few moments of The Mist. When Earth finds itself invaded by creatures who lurk in a thick mist, people start to panic pretty quickly. A group led by a man named David endures several traumatic monster attacks and begins to feel that all hope is lost. They decide to take their own lives, and David kills his companions, which includes his son, before giving himself up to the monsters. Come on! But as he submits, we learn that the army has essentially neutralized the threat. The gut punch of a twist is that if the group had just waited things out, they probably all would have been fine. Number 24. Eli was blind the entire time. The Book of Eli. In the dystopian aftermath of a nuclear apocalypse, a man named Eli sets out on a journey to help preserve humankind's culture. My name is Eli. I have a King James Bible in my possession. You might be able to guess that this movie has some religious undertones. But did you pick up on the fact that Eli was actually blind the entire time? The reveal comes when the warlord Carnegie learns that Eli's copy of the Bible is in Braille. This new bit of information not only surprises audiences, but also adds to the movie's religious themes. Eli's journey to deliver the Bible is almost literally one of blind faith. We're out of the ground. We were taken for the dust we are. To the dust we shall return. Number 23. The Real Wizard. The Wizard of Oz. I am Oz, the great and powerful. The Land of Oz is a magical world filled with all kinds of colorful characters. Trying to return home, Dorothy is joined by the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion in a quest to find the famed Wizard of Oz. Come to see the Wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. We're here. He is the Wizard of Wiz, the Wizard of Wiz that was. With the way everyone hypes this guy up, he's bound to be a pretty powerful magical being, right? Well, actually, no. It's later revealed that the Wizard is just a regular old man who found his way to the Land of Oz while traveling in a hot air balloon. Despite being a fraud, he does help the main characters realize that they already had the qualities they were seeking all along. Number 22. Guilty All Along – Primal Fear When Aaron Stampler is put on trial for the brutal killing of an archbishop, he desperately pleads that he didn't do it. As Aaron's case continues, it starts to seem like he could have dissociative identity disorder. Where the hell do you think you're going? Excuse hey, me? Hey! You look at me when I'm talking to you, you a judge winds up declaring Aaron not guilty by reason of insanity, having witnessed Aaron's alleged violent personality Roy in the courtroom. It's a surprising sequence of events, but it gets much stranger later. Afterwards, it's revealed that Aaron faked his multiple personalities. He was guilty all along and tricked not only his lawyer, but probably a large part of the film's audience as well. There never was an Aaron counselor. Number 21. Odesu and Mido's Real Relationship – Old Boy Nothing quite disturbs us like the South Korean action thriller Old Boy. It follows Odesu, who is freed after 15 years in captivity. Desu sets out to get revenge on his captors and find his long-lost daughter. While he manages to start a relationship with a chef named Mido, the film reveals that the romance is ill-fated. Actually, that doesn't even really do it justice. When Desu finally confronts his captor Wu Jin, he learns that Mido is actually the daughter he was trying to find. It's definitely the kind of twist that makes us want to be hypnotized into forgetting it. Number 20. The Invisible Man Becomes Visible. The Invisible Man. I found something that can prove what I'm experiencing that can prove that Adrian is stalking me. The 2020 film adaptation of The Invisible Man is based on the 1897 H.G. Wells novel of the same name. Starring Elizabeth Moss as Cecilia, the title of the film is pretty explanatory of the premise. A scientist concocts a way to become invisible, then terrorizes Moss's character in violent and unpredictable ways. The catch here is that for the entire film, the titular character is presumed to be Cecilia's abusive ex, who apparently killed himself shortly after she left him. There you are. <laughs> 
But that is proven false when, after gaining the upper hand and fatally shooting the Invisible Man, Moss's character realizes the Invisible Man was her ex's brother. <gasps> Number 19. Meeting the Parents – Spider-Man Homecoming He must be Peter. Yeah. Meeting your date's parents is awkward enough, especially when her father is the weapons mastermind that tried to kill you. Adrian Toomes, also known as Vulture, tried multiple times to disrupt the status quo and squander Spider-Man's feeble attempts at retaliation. So we guess you could say they knew each other, kinda? After Peter arrives at his homecoming date's house, he is left absolutely speechless when Vulture opens the door to welcome him. Clueless as to Spidey's real identity, Toomes tries to ease the palpable tension with cheesy dad jokes that only make things more awkward. Because you look pale. You don't have to drink like a bourbon or a scotch or something like that? I'm not old enough to drink. It's the right answer. Vulture catches on to Peter after a while, though, but when the family relation is initially revealed, it was certainly a jaw-dropping moment no one could have predicted. Does she know? Know what? So she does it. Good. Number 18. Malcolm Rivers' Multiple Personalities – Identity Where'd you get that? Right here. The main plot of the 2003 film Identity revolves around dissociative identity disorder, previously known as multiple personality disorder, which is a condition where an individual harbors two or more different personalities that are empirically distinct from one another. Malcolm Rivers suffers from this mental illness, having created 11 separate identities within himself to cope with childhood trauma. You missed your last appointment. Where have you been? Did I black out again? Try and think back. Where have you been? However, he's unaware of the situation and unable to recognize the mugshot of convicted murderer Malcolm Rivers, the original man that contains all of his identities. So it's particularly shocking when his psychiatrist shows him a mirror and the image of himself that's reflected back is Malcolm Rivers as played by Pruitt Taylor Vince. Edward, that is your face. Why am I tied you up? Come. Where's... Edward, please. Jesus Christ, where is my face? Subsequently, he has a bit of a freakout flashing between Malcolm Rivers and Ed Dakota, played by John Cusack, and everything is gradually explained. Malcolm is in the midst of a medical treatment, one which forces all his identities to confront one another for the first time. Number 17. Red is Adelaide, Adelaide is Red. Us. So you see, the shadow hated the girl so much, but so with his debut feature film, Get Out, Jordan Peele announced himself as a potentially game-changing filmmaker, one who knows how to keep audiences on their toes. His follow-up, Us, is a thrilling horror movie starring Lupita Nyong'o that pushed the boundaries within the genre to new psychological heights. The two were connected, tethered together. The story Red tells the Wilsons about the girl and her shadow is seriously haunting but also the key foreshadowing for the final twist. You don't know what happened to her. Anything could have happened okay. to her. In the film's final moments, Adelaide again recalls the incident from her childhood at the Funhouse, this time revealing the full picture. Red attacked Adelaide and left her trapped in the Funhouse with the tethered, meaning that for the entire movie, Red was Adelaide and Adelaide was Red. Number 16. People Food – Soylent Green Soylent. Listen to me, Thorn. Thorn, listen. The best type of plot twist is one that involves cannibalism. Unfortunately, that just so happens to be the reveal in Soylent Green. In a dystopian world ravaged by overpopulation and a mass shortage of essential resources like food and water, Soylent Industries provides wafers as a food source. One in particular, the film's namesake, Soylent Green, is tasty and nutritious, allegedly made from ocean plankton. A new delicious... Soylent Green, the miracle food of high-energy plankton gathered from the oceans of the world. However, oceanographic reports proved the oceans had no plankton, and upon further investigation, it's revealed that Soylent Green is actually made out of human remains, meaning anyone who ate the wafer was unintentionally partaking in cannibalism. Soylent Green is made out of people. Number 15. Ghostface Unmasked – Scream 
Why don't you want to talk to me? Who is this? You tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. The biggest twist in this movie was that Drew Barrymore, who was marketed as the main lead in the film, was only in it for like two seconds. Just kidding. Though that was quite the bait and switch. <laughs> The Scream franchise, which began in 1996, distinguished itself early by holding up a mirror to the genre, as well as calling out and toying with common horror tropes. Main character Sidney Prescott is stalked by the mask-wearing killer Ghostface, and he is seriously creepy. Well, more like they are creepy. The huge plot twist comes near the end of the movie, when it's revealed that Ghostface is actually two killers, not just one. And it made for a killer reveal. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. Number 14. The Real Jigsaw Killer. Saw. Congratulations. The dead body is not dead. We repeat, the dead body is not dead. This hugely successful franchise has racked up more than its fair share of twists and turns over the course of numerous sequels. But the twist ending of the first film remains arguably the property's greatest to date. Hello, Amanda. You don't know me, but I know you. As the main characters attempt to navigate the cruel game of life and death into which they've been thrust against their will, it quickly becomes clear that death is far more likely than escape. In Saw's final scene, after all the tension and bloodshed, the dead body in the middle of the room slowly rises up. It's a very interesting person. His name is John. He has an inoperable frontal lobe tumor. The villainous jigsaw killer was hiding in plain sight the whole time. Number 13. The Bunker. Parasite. <laughs> This genre-bending film is a wild ride from start to finish. Directed by Pong Joon-ho, who won four Academy Awards for the film, Parasite can be described as cerebral, funny, and thrilling. The title Parasite is quite telling, as something that lives off of another is essentially the boiled-down premise of this movie. The Kim family secretly infiltrates the wealthy Park family, but they aren't the only ones. The park's former housekeeper and her husband were keeping secrets too. <laughs> the hidden underground bunker definitely makes for an unexpected twist, one that added just the right amount of excitement and tension. Though, as to the question of who the real parasites are, that remains up for debate. <laughs> Number 12. Sacrifice. The Prestige. The one who went into the box, or the one who came back out. We took turns. Following the lives of two rival magicians, Angier and Borden, this psychological thriller sees each of them creating performances where they were apparently able to transport themselves to different spots on the stage. However, when Angier seemingly drowns in an act gone wrong, Borden is found at the scene and sentenced to death for the magician's murder. I saw someone making their way below stage. I followed them. It was Borden, watching Mr. Angier drown. Would you but Angier didn't really die. Moments after Borden's execution, the executed man shoots Angier, revealing he was a twin. The grim final twist comes when Borden realizes just how Angier pulled off his own act. He would clone himself, while the original would fall through a trap door and drown under the stage. The bloody key! Bloody drowning! A magician never reveals their secret, but it would seem that it was actually lies and deception from the start. I pulled you out. Out of that tank. All I wanted to do was prove that I was a better magician. But you couldn't leave me alone. Number 11. What's in the box? Seven. Oh, what's in the box? What's in the box? Gwyneth Paltrow's decapitated head, of course. Uh, no, seriously. I took a souvenir. Her pretty head. This classic David Fincher crime thriller had an unforgettably chilling twist. Detectives Somerset and Mills finally apprehend a murderer they were hunting, who happens to be a serial killer whose heinous crimes were based on the seven deadly sins, gluttony, greed, sloth, lust, pride, envy, and wrath. Known only as John Doe, he gives himself up to the police, convincing the detectives to follow his terms of surrender in return for the last two victims. John Doe directs them to a remote location, and this is where he reveals he had murdered Mills' pregnant wife because of his envy of their normal life, 
which incites Mills to kill John Doe in a blind rage, becoming the last of the deadly sins, Wrath. Number 10. Snape's True Intentions – Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 Take them. Take them. The eighth and final film adaptation of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series was the anticipated emotional ending over a decade in the making. Those who read the books knew the twist before the film was released, but those who didn't were in for a big shock. Throughout the series, Professor Severus Snape, played by the late great Alan Rickman, was a clear antagonist, with a seething hatred for both Harry and his deceased father. However, in the battle between Voldemort and Hogwarts, Voldemort orders Snape to be killed. Before he dies, Snape is able to pass on his memories to Harry, which reveal in a poignantly heart-wrenching portrayal that he had been protecting Harry all along. It spoke of a boy born at the end of July. Yes, but he thinks it's her son. He intends to hunt them down now, to kill them. Hide her. Hide them all. I beg you. Let's just say that now we can't hear the word always without sobbing. After all this time. Always. Number 9. Who is Andrew Latus? Shutter Island. This Scorsese thriller follows Edward Teddy Daniels a U.S. Marshal investigating a missing patient of the titular island psychiatric facility. Sorry, Doctor. You don't happen to have an aspirin, do you? Suffering migraines and hallucinations, Daniels becomes increasingly paranoid and believes something is definitely off about the whole thing. Tremors are getting pretty bad. How are the hallucinations? Get out of here, Teddy. This place is going to be the end of you. The plot comes to a head when the staff reveals that Daniels himself is the arsonist he has ultimately been chasing after. They were performing an experiment to see if he would recall the events that led him to the facility. Teddy Daniels' real name is Andrew Latus. He killed his wife after she drowned their children. They'll be our living dolls. <gasps> the experiment is ultimately deemed a failure. But Leonardo DiCaprio's statement at the end of the film implies he does in fact remember. Knowing the truth, he'd simply rather be lobotomized. Which would be worse? To live as a monster? Or to die as a good man? Number 8. A Telling Handshake – Unbreakable <sighs> A horrific train crash that killed 130 people in the blink of an eye leaves one man, David Dunn, as the sole survivor, and shockingly without a single scratch on him. Elijah, a comic book art dealer, tells him about his theory of real superheroes. If there is someone like me in the world, and I'm at one end of the spectrum, couldn't there be someone else, the opposite of me at the other end? Someone who doesn't get sick, who doesn't get hurt like the rest of us. David realizes he's walked away from more than a few near-death experiences, and that he can see people's crimes through physical contact with them. Unfortunately, the twist comes at David's expense when a later handshake with Elijah reveals that he was the mastermind behind various accidents, including David's train crash, because he was seeking a superhero counterpart to his villain. You know what the scariest thing is? To not know your place in this world. To not know why you're here. Many years later, we get a bonus reveal in the film Split, which is a sneaky sequel that sees Dunn making an appearance at the very end. This is like that crazy guy in the wheelchair that they put away 15 years ago. And they gave him a funny name, too. What was it? Mr. Glass. Number 7. Tyler Durden, also known as The Narrator. Fight Club. Ever notice that Edward Norton's character in Fight Club doesn't have a name? Known only as the narrator, his life becomes infinitely more exciting and chaotic after meeting Tyler Durden, played by Brad Pitt. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. They establish a fight club together that soon evolves into an anti-consumerism organization that condones violence and anarchy. The massive twist comes when the narrator tracks down Durden to a different city, where he informs him that they are one and the same. Because we're the same person. That's right. The brilliant editing throughout the film, which included split-second spliced frames of Durden in scenes with the narrator, paired with this iconic twist, firmly established this movie as a cult classic. I am smart, capable, and most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you are not. Oh, no. 
Tyler's not here. Tyler went away. Tyler's gone. What? Number six, an inappropriate relationship. Chinatown. That's what I thought. You see, I'm Mrs. Evelyn Mulray. A neo-noir mystery film directed by Roman Polanski, Chinatown stars Jack Nicholson as private investigator J.J. Jake Giddes. After a series of events, he looks into the murder of a Department of Water and Power chief engineer, leading him to the man's wife, Evelyn Mulray. Some fishy business is going down, but Giddes can't figure it out. That is, until he catches Evelyn with her dead husband's mistress. The police. Come on, Mrs. Mulray, you've got your husband's girlfriend tied up in there. She's not tied up. You know what I mean. After multiple attempts to deduce their relationship, the truth comes out. Because of what her father did, Evelyn's sister is also her daughter. Also, it turns out that Evelyn's father had her husband murdered. This kind of relationship definitely qualifies as a plot twist, albeit a disturbing one. Ah. <laughs> Number five, Dead People, The Sixth Sense. Admittedly, M. Night Shyamalan has had a bit of a bumpy career directing more than his fair share of flops. But when The Sixth Sense hit theaters in 1999, he was being heralded as one of the most promising young storytellers working in the medium. I want to tell you my secret now. The major plot twist has inspired and appeared in many movies, including The Others, which was released just a few years after. All of the clues were spelled out plain as day. The kid literally tells us that he interacts with the dead. I see dead. Looking back, it all makes sense, but the first viewing was a huge shock to everyone who watched. Stellar performances by both Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment made this plot twist an absolute jaw-dropper. Who, uh, who were you talking to? Just practicing my lines. Number 4. Home Sweet Home – Planet of the Apes Imagine waking up on a strange planet almost 2,000 years after your space mission began. Well, that's exactly how Planet of the Apes begins, and it only gets wilder from there. Shortly after landing, astronauts Taylor, Dodge, and Landon are captured by primates who rule the planet. The sooner he is exterminated, the better. It's a question of simian survival. They realize humans are imprisoned and enslaved, while the apes, chimpanzees, and orangutans are the masters of society. A scary concept for sure, especially when the primates threaten to lobotomize, castrate, and kill Taylor. He escapes to a forbidden area where the plot twist and truth is finally revealed. He's been on Earth all along. My God. I'm back. I'm home. Upon seeing a half-buried and demolished Statue of Liberty, the man breaks down, cursing those responsible for humanity's fall. You blew it up! Damn you! God damn you all to hell! Number three, the greatest trick, the usual suspects. I like cops. I would have liked to have been a fed myself, but my CP always... Verbal, you're not telling us everything. I know you know something. This classic crime film has one of the most thrilling and unpredictable twists to date. Con artist Verbal Kint, a survivor of a mass murder on a ship, is interrogated for his involvement in it. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Telling Agent Kuyan about the events that led to the massacre, Verbal narrates a convoluted yet compelling story about various criminals, including Redfoot, Kobayashi, and the infamous Kaiser Soze. Eventually, Verbal confesses that one of his fellow criminals was behind it all, but he would not testify against him. That he named close to 50 people. Guess who he named in the finale? Kaiser Soze. However, this doesn't sit right with Kuyan, and a few moments after Verbal leaves, he realizes the man was bluffing, weaving together elements of information from his surroundings in the room to tell his story. Verbal then disappears without a trace before Kuyan can catch him. Some guy in California, his name is Redfoot. A gift from Mr. Soze. Talk to me, Verbal. Me. What about Redfoot? Mr. Redfoot, you're nothing. Number two, I am your father. Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. Not only is Star Wars among the most influential entertainment franchises in the world, but it also gave us one of the most quoted plot twists in cinematic history. You are beaten. It is useless to resist. Don't let yourself be destroyed as Obi-Wan did. In The Empire Strikes Back, Vader attempts to convince Luke to join him on the dark side while engaging the young would-be Jedi in a lightsaber duel. After cutting off Luke's hand, 
Vader reveals a shocking secret to the seemingly defeated young hero, uttering the now iconic words, I am your father. If it weren't so devastating to Luke, it would actually be kind of heartwarming. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Either way, when the movie came out in 1980, it was one huge plot twist. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Norman Bates is the Psycho Psycho Alfred Hitchcock's legendary psychological horror film needs no introduction. Mrs. Bates. The entire ending is one big twist arguably the greatest and most memorable in cinematic history. First reveal, Mrs. Bates has been dead for the whole movie. Second reveal, Norman is the killer. Third reveal, Norman is Mrs. Bates in his mind. Setting a precedent for plot twists and identity reveals, Psycho paved the way for hundreds of films for decades to come. They'll see, they'll see and they'll know and they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. In the ending monologue, Norman's inner voice, or rather the voice of his mother, saying that Norman's innocence will become known because she wouldn't even harm a fly, is absolutely chilling. Is there a surprising cinematic reveal we missed? Blow our minds in the comments. Don't make me destroy you. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.